there aren't many natural processes as strikingly beautiful and easily observable as leaves changing color in fall. Whether you live surrounded by deciduous forests, or there are just a few scattered trees growing in your city, you've probably witnessed the beautiful color display that most trees put on when transitioning from summer to winter. Also striking is the fact that all the leaves on most of these trees are shed at once, leaving the tree bare over winter. When a tree does this, we call it deciduous. So why are leaves green most of the year, then they suddenly change their color? Let's start at the beginning of the life of a leaf. In spring, when temperatures start to rise and days are getting longer, tiny leaves start to emerge from budding twigs. During this time, you see a lot of pale yellow-green hues dominating the landscape. The green color in plants comes from a pigment called chlorophyll that occurs in various parts of plant bodies, but is most abundant in leaves. The pigment is concentrated in plant cells, specifically in cellular organelles called chloroplasts, and it has a vital function for the plant. It absorbs light and plays a major role in photosynthesis, the process during which the food for a plant is produced. The production of chlorophyll is stimulated by sunlight and as the season progresses, the combination of warmer temperatures, longer periods of daylight, and increasing intensity of sunlight cause chlorophyll production to ramp up. Going into summer, we can observe the leaves becoming more numerous, larger and thicker, and their green color becoming deeper and more intense. Chlorophyll does break down in the leaf, however, and this happens at a more or less continuous rate. But when the conditions are right, it gets replaced rapidly as fast or even faster than it breaks down, and new chlorophyll molecules are produced continuously. Chlorophyll is not the only pigment present in plant leaves, but because of its high concentration, it obscures the less abundantly present pigments, all of which fulfill different functions for the plant. So what other colors are hiding under the green? Carotenoids are a major group of pigments that are often present in leaves. They're responsible for the yellow and orange hues we're talking about the same pigments that give the bright orange color to carrots or deep yellow to sunflowers. Carotenoids provide photoprotection for leaves and they don't break down in the way chlorophyll does. They stay present in the leaf during its entire life. Flavonoids are another class of pigments commonly found in leaves. Here we're specifically talking about anthocyanins, which create red, blue, and purple hues. You might think of some ornamental plants, such as oxalis, that have purple leaves all year long. That's because they produce large amounts of anthocyanins, enough to mask other colors in the leaves. Plants with such coloration are often highly valued as ornamentals. However, in most plants, the production of anthocyanins in leaves starts or ramps up in fall, at the end of the active growing season. So, contrary to chlorophyll and carotenoids, Anthocyanins are not always present for the entire life of a leaf. The reason for this anthocyanin production is not well understood, but may have to do with protecting the leaf from damaging UV rays, frost, or from feeding by insects. What is known is that anthocyanins are produced from sugars, so when sugar concentration in the leaf is higher, anthocyanin production tends to be higher. Let's skip to the end of summer. During this time, temperatures start dropping and days shorten. As we previously mentioned, chlorophyll production is amplified by warm temperatures and sunlight, so when these two factors start to decline, the production of chlorophyll slows down. At a certain point during fall, this production drops off rapidly, and the replacement rate does not keep up with the degradation of chlorophyll. When this happens, the green color in leaves disappears rapidly, revealing other colors in the leaf. On top of that, as mentioned before, in some leaves the production of anthocyanins ramps up and brings in new red or purple hues. So some pigments are disappearing, some new ones are being created, and the ever-present ones are finally being revealed. All these changes in pigment quantities and their interactions with each other manifest as a beautiful, colorful display of autumn foliage. Even though these changes in leaves happen every year, Temperature, sunshine, and the amount of moisture in the soil play a major role in how brilliant and lasting the autumn foliage will be. That's why some years might offer a more spectacular display than others. 
You might notice that leaves with no or very little green color come off the tree much easier than the leaves with green pigment present. This is because alongside the chemical changes, the tree is getting ready to shed its leaves for winter by expanding an abscission layer at the place where the leaf stalk or petiole attaches to the twig. This layer or zone consists of multiple layers of cells. The cells closer to the twig expand, while cells closer to the leaf start to break down, and eventually these layers separate. The tree weakens the connection between the twig and the leaf to the point where the leaf is barely hanging on and falls off. This is an active process. This is also why the leaves that are ready are easily blown from the tree by a gust of wind. So why does the tree bother getting rid of its leaves for winter? It's because the cost of having leaves outweighs the benefits during a particular season. Leaves of deciduous trees cannot fulfill their food production role in winter, since the conditions for photosynthesis are less than ideal. The process is inefficient below about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, plus sunlight is less abundant during winter. The energy cost of maintaining leaves is high, but as winter approaches, the tree gets fewer and fewer benefits in return. Having leaves during winter is also risky. The leaves of deciduous trees tend to be big, thin, and flat areas full of moisture. If moisture is still present in leaves, freezing temperatures create ice crystals inside the leaf tissue that can damage the leaves and slow down nutrient flow. This doesn't happen in coniferous trees that have their leaves, their needles, full of resin, and covered in a waxy cuticle, which along with their compact shape, protects them from harsh winter conditions. Sometimes trees hold on to their dead leaves throughout winter because the development of the abscission layer during fall was, for various reasons, unfinished. This is observable especially in young beech and certain oak trees. This phenomenon is called marcescence, and while the leaves are still physically attached to the twigs, they're dead and there's no flow of nutrients between the leaves and the rest of the tree. So why don't plants just drop their green leaves once they're done with them? Why do leaves go through all those chemical changes before the tree finally gets rid of them? Well, beyond the chlorophyll, there are structures and molecules in leaf cells that take a lot of the plant's energy and resources to make. Remember we talked about leaves being expensive organs for the plant? In particular, proteins in the leaf contain a lot of nitrogen, an essential chemical that plants often have difficulty in obtaining enough of. This puts a lot of pressure on plants to save as much nitrogen as they can. Therefore, it pays off for them to break down these structures and reabsorb that nitrogen instead of suddenly dropping their leaves and losing all of that expensive machinery they put resources into creating. And why don't the leaves stay green until they drop off? Well, it turns out that chlorophyll is a powerful toxin in the plant should it be set loose during the breakdown process. Remember, this is a unique and powerful molecule that captures energy from sunlight that fuels chemical reactions in the leaf. This means that chlorophyll must be eliminated from the leaf so that it doesn't cause chemical havoc and the machinery breakdown and reabsorption process can go smoothly. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.